Hello, and welcome to me talking about my sense of self-doubt. <laughs> um, no, I, I think it was that video I did last week on Doors that made me think to talk about this topic because I was a bit apologetic in that video because, you know, Doors seems like a mundane topic and it was analysing art which I always feel slightly uncomfortable about doing because of that that stereotype of people you see in art galleries who just make up a load of waffle about a painting to try and sound smart. <laughs> I didn't want to sound like that. And I think it was a bit unnecessarily apologetic because I did have about two weeks of mad algorithm success where The Breakfast Club and then The Good Bull Hunting videos were getting recommended all over the place. Um, Meaning there's a lot of new people here who were positive about those sort of analysis videos and I think this sudden high number of people makes me feel like I should be upping my game to match that, you know? Um, like I should be releasing an in-depth analysis every week which is just impossible um, because they take forever to edit whereas videos like these I can just ramble on and have Dave's blessing to use his videos for background footage, um, which is where they all come from in case you knew. All the walks are from his channel, Dave's Walks. Uh, link in the description, please give him support because I think he's fantastic. Anyway, the point is I felt unnecessarily apologetic about me rambling on about doors for those reasons and it made me think about self-doubt, which is common, if not inevitable, in any creative project anybody works on. Um, I get it here on YouTube, I think, oh, talking about doors could be fun, and I do it and then get a bit doubtful thinking, is this video saying anything beyond doors are interesting, aren't they? Is this video to all over the place? Does anybody care about doors? Um, not a big feeling of doubt, because I've always just done whatever I felt interested or passionate to talk about on this channel. Um, <laughs> I hope that doesn't sound ungrateful, you know, that... I don't make videos I think will interest you or will get a lot of views. I make whatever feels right and interests me at the time and then hope it interests you as well. Um, <laughs> but self-doubt is no doubt a part of every YouTuber's experience ever. Um, as this Ryan George sketch details. And processing's done, keywords are good, and publish. That's the worst video anyone's ever made. And it's not a bad thing, I don't think. The fact I feel doubt over a lot of YouTube videos I post, actually, I've made quite a few um, and decided, ah, I don't want to share this, and then ended up having to in a week where I had nothing else to upload. The amount of times that's happened. Um, but it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not like a sign of low self-esteem that I doubt what I make or whatever. I think low self-esteem would be if I made a video and then never shared it, deleted it, destroyed all trace of its existence because the mere thought of it made me cringe. Or maybe low self-esteem would be like flaunting, like I don't care in order to resist my doubt or something. I don't know. Both of those feelings I think we all feel a bit on some level, but uh, you know. I suppose I just think the fact I sometimes doubt what I create is expected because my videos are flawed, you know? How can I possibly hope to explain all of an entire character's personality in a 20 minute video. How can I possibly hope to meaningfully analyse a counselling scene from a fictitious film written by two kids who weren't therapists, especially when I myself haven't had like 30 years experience in the job yet or anything. Um, and these rambling videos are obviously flawed because it's just me rambling. If I, if I didn't recognise and doubt my videos for these flaws then you know I'd be blind uh, because they're not perfect um, but I want to talk about writing rather than YouTube because I think writing is an art form where self-doubt is a particularly big struggle because writing is so reflective um, you know you have to go back and edit and question every word you wrote does the plot make sense is this character stupid is the pacing wrong does the theme work is this line of dialogue cringy um, everything has to be fought over to an extent <laughs> that probably sounds neurotic if you think about it. And writing is the example I, I guess I'm using also because it's it's what I know. Um, but I suspect this does apply to other types of creativity too. 
you know, you have an idea for your story or whatever, and it makes you feel excited to write it because that idea, that vision is perfect and very vivid in your mind, like the peak of a mountain. All you have to do is put what you see in your mind onto paper. But then you start and you realise the vision in your mind looks very different when you put it onto paper. Which either means this perfect idea isn't so perfect after all, or that you're not very good at expressing it the way you want. And that's a realisation that always causes a lot of doubt. Um, like I remember the first time I ever tried learning a language, I would have been about 15, um, it was Italian. I started out all excited, you know, learnt some words, looked at a bit of grammar and then very quickly realised just how much stuff there is to learn and how daunting that all is and suddenly I just kind of lost interest. Um, the amount of times we get bored with something when really the feeling is this is too hard and makes me feel stupid so I'm putting it out of my mind. And that's self-doubt again, I think really. Um, and I came back to Italian several years on to try again, and this time just blitzed a ton of vocabulary, ignored the grammar and all the extra things that might confuse me until I'd learned like 500 words or something, um, so I could just have that confidence, you know, this feeling of, okay, well at least I've got this under my belt now, that's something. And I think that made it feel less daunting then when I did move on to the grammar and everything else, because like at least I'd gotten somewhere, I'm not stupid. <laughs> and I used to have this habit of endlessly getting an idea for a story, writing about a third of it and then giving up when I realised the flaws and felt daunted and stuck and it was just easier to think of a new idea again because new ideas seem perfect and are much more exciting. <laughs> um, I think every creative person has to wrestle with their own self-doubt in their work. And it's like you are always constantly swinging between the extremes of this idea is amazing and I'm super excited to this idea is terrible, I want to give up. And it's that struggle I think that makes the work harder um, than anything else. You know, not even what other people think of it because this is still the early stage where you're trying to write it and you just feel dissatisfied because it doesn't quite look the way you wanted it to look and you don't know how to fix it or if you even can. And feeling like that is a good thing, I think. You know, if, if I didn't doubt my writing, would it ever improve? You know, it'd, be, it'd probably be terrible. Um, if I just thought I was brilliant all the time, what would be getting better, you know? So I don't think being critical is a bad thing at all. It's just how scathing um, you are with your self-criticism that matters. You know, whether you're so hard on yourself that it kills off all motivation or not. Like the novel I'm writing now, I think I'm mostly happy with it, but I think it takes too long to properly start and properly get going, you know, to really get into it, which is a big problem. Um, but that's a criticism I have to try my best to fix, and, you know, I have to be honest with myself about that. Do I think that flaw makes me a terrible writer and the book is irredeemably bad and I should just never write ever again? Um, no. <laughs> uh, Criticising yourself it shouldn't be punishing yourself, I guess. I think I still have to trust that I will find a way, that I can fix it, that it's not so hard that I have to give up, you know? I think I have to be a bit relaxed with trust in that way. But the hardest thing, I think, is when I know something's wrong with the book or whatever I'm working on, but I don't actually know what. Um, when you just have that nagging feeling that can linger there for weeks before you figure it out, that's, that's the biggest burden, I think. So I guess... Um, I just wanted to say I think that sense of doubt is an intrinsic part of the creative process. Um, in the way I think people often overlook, you know, sometimes creativity is thought about as just like this natural gift that creative people have, and that they just easily whip up something creative, even if it takes a bit of time. Um, and it's really fine and it's as simple as that, like, they can just do it, you know? <laughs> but it's not, it's... Um, I'm, like, I remember being told once that writing a novel is like a journey through yourself, working through all your feelings and your hopes and fears in this, this other fictional plane of existence, you know? Um, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. It's not just a thing you do, it's... It's an emotional 
very Joseph Campbell sort of ordeal. Um, and at some point in that journey, you have to come face to face with the self-doubt and your inner ugliness. Um, yeah, which is where the doubt becomes worse, but you, you still have to find a way forward, and I, I guess that's a very dramatic way of putting it, but I'm sure there's some truth to that. Creativity is like a kid playing with toys, you know, I think we all know that, I've probably said it before, um, but I don't think I've said that it's not exactly like that, you know. There is still a very serious side to creative project in a way that there isn't with playing, that it, it doesn't matter with playing, you know, you, you can play and it can be very safe and contained, and when it gets hard or when you get bored you can just stop and do something else instead. With a creative project you have to see it through to the end and uh, have a bit of grit I guess, but somehow keep this more playful side of creativity going, somehow keep that up even when you feel nothing like it, and somehow keeping this serious critical side going even when it threatens to kill off all enthusiasm the balance, that's very difficult, um, and it took me years to learn how to finish things, because I think finishing a big creative project is not just about technique or time, it's about emotion more than them, I think, and I guess learning to face up to this part of you that doesn't feel safe, and doesn't feel happy, and is worried about the work, um, and it's about how to manage self-doubt in that way. Well, that's one emotional ordeal that could be found in creativity anyway. You know, I, I, I suspect there are others who have absolutely no problem finishing projects, but bigger problems with other parts and other feelings, you know? Um, I guess that's all I wanted to say, though. <laughs> creativity is hard, I guess. It's fun, but it's also quite hard and sometimes scary in this weird way. It's not as hard as other things I know but you know there's, there's still that challenge to it that we still have to overcome somehow um, I'm yet to discover the experience of trying to market a book to literary agents or publishers um, trying to get it out there emailing tons of them without getting any replies and I imagine that's going to cause a hell of a lot of self-doubt but I'm not quite at that stage yet so I've got that to come Thanks for listening to me, anyway. If you liked this, give it a like. If you want to stick around, subscribe. Support me on Patreon if you want even more. Otherwise, hopefully see you next time. And a thank you to Brian Newbert, Devin, David Kling, Darren Burdock-Latter and Samara Salsi for your support. It means a lot, thank you.